Hi, I'm Dr. Roland Roberts, and welcome to this week's Hangout on what it means to empower people. You know, there's so much confusion in the marketplace today about what mentorship is. And we use a lot of words interchangeably. We talk about mentorship, we talk about empowerment, we talk about how someone is inspirational. And really, what we're trying to do is recognize that there are multiple kinds of um, mentorship, or at least where that label gets applied. So for example, there's the boys and girls club type of mentorship where it's scheduled, it's planned, they associate you with someone. Uh, and then you are able to take them under your wing, take an interest in that person, and be there for them, uh, which is wonderful. And then there's the life coaching industry and the tens of thousands of life coaches out there that have almost a therapy or counseling type business model where you schedule the appointment and either over the phone or through Skype or uh, through coming into the office and there is a, a one hour session generally and that could be once a week, it could be once a month, it could be with whatever frequency. But that is, the, that is the model of the life coaching industry. And then there's the thousands of ways that we all try to come up with to uh, innovate and say, how do we make a difference in other people's lives? How do we help take what we know and share that with other people? And you don't have to be a life coach to have that desire. You don't have to be in ministry to have that desire. You don't have to be a teacher or a coach to have that desire. There's a lot of people who take great pleasure and value in helping and in making a difference in other people's lives. So the number one question is, what does it mean to empower people? How do we empower people? Because let me tell you, the way that most people do it, it doesn't work. We've got more audios, uh, audio programs on how to empower people than you can shake a stick at. We, there's more books. There are more programs that you can sign up for. The mentorship and empowerment is everywhere, and everyone's trying to figure out what is the best way to do it. How do you actually move the needle in someone's life or business? And that is what I want to talk about today. Because if you ask most people, who had the most impact on your life? Most likely, they would tell you that the person that empowered them the most was either a mom, a dad, a coach, a teacher, or someone like that. Which, and that's probably the case in your life as well. Which brings me to this question. If that is who is truly making the most difference and is the most impactful and is the best at empowering other people, then what lessons do we need to draw from that so that we are more effective at empowering other people? Three observations that I want to share with you. Number one, you can't buy empowerment or mentorship. You can't buy it. People try. You've probably tried. We all sell it. But you cannot buy empowerment or mentorship. You can only buy advice. And there's a big difference between the two. So you can't buy empowerment and you can't buy mentorship. Number two. It is not a scheduled event, time, or place. So not only did I not hire my mom or dad to empower me, or my teacher, or my coach to empower me, it happened organically. I allowed myself to be influenced by them, and they were just kind of there for me, is how most people describe that relationship. Not only can you not hire it, but it's not like it was scheduled. Okay, mom, dad, teacher, coach, every day after school for 15 minutes, for 30 minutes, I want to have a session with you and you can empower me or you can mentor me. You know, it, instead, what that looked like was on the way back from recess, on the way back from lunch, 
the teacher says something that uplifts me. Or maybe it was while I was walking into the classroom that day. Or maybe it was when she was answering a, a question one-on-one -on -one that I had. Or maybe it was when I was leaving school for the day. Or when I passed them in the hallway. That's where teacher empowerment happened. Same thing with a coach. It's not that they spent all this gobs of time with me outside of the team or whatever else or with you. It, it's, it happens one-on-one. -on -one. It's not scheduled. It doesn't happen in a specific time or a specific place. Number three, it is a relationship where nothing is expected in return. There is no expectation of exchange of any kind in any form, which means nobody was paying the other person. The person doing the mentorship, this is hard for me to grasp, it really is, but the person doing the mentoring, even if they didn't even recognize that that's what they were doing, they did not have, there was no expectation of what I was going to become or the results that I would attain from it. Now normally, when you mentor someone or empower someone, uh, it is because you are going to invest that time in them so long as they do what you say, number one, and number two, get results. If not, it's perceived as a waste of our time. So in a real empowerment situation, like what has truly impacted most people, that expectation isn't there. Now it is on, to some degree with obviously parenting, uh, do this, don't do this. If you do it, you know, you're going, or don't do it, whichever it is, like sin of omission or commission, you're going to feel the wrath. You're going to get, you know, the board of education, uh, Applied to the seat of knowledge, the seat of learning. There, you know, it, it's you're going to you're going to. There's a price to pay, so there is some element of that, but that's not the times that most impact people, the children growing up. It's the it's the time that that you, that you spent with them. Uh, in my case, you know, it might have been my mom shooting basketball with me. Actually, she she really didn't enjoy shooting basketball, so she would just rebound while I shoot. And uh, but it was it would be an hour of us just talking and bonding, not even sometimes talking about anything real. But that's where I was empowered. That's what moved me to do what she would teach me or tell me to do in other areas of life. And same thing with a coach. It's not the times where they're pushing me, pushing me, pushing me. Those, that's great. Got to have that. That's not where I was being empowered. I was being taught discipline. I was being taught a lot of different things. I was not being empowered. Where I was really being empowered is when they would spend time with me even if it was just a sentence or a phrase or a paragraph every now and then, just a brief few moments of what I needed at that moment. They knew where I was at mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, whatever. And they were there with whatever words they had that they could share. Those are the three observations that I've made about real empowerment. What does that mean for you and I? How do we get better at making a difference in people's lives? Well, I have, before I give you three specific things you can do to start today being significantly more effective at empowering other people. But before I give you those three, I want us to understand something. People are starving to be empowered. They are starving for empowerment. Think about their lives. They wake up in the morning. They go to a place of work that many times they are not appreciated, much less celebrated. They walk in the door. Hardly anyone notices. They get, a, or if they do, it's being handed a stack of problems that need to be dealt with immediately. There may be some nice office chit chat and maybe some off water cooler talk about you know how was your night. Not that I really care. I'm just being nice and friendly and making small talk here, trying to be a good coworker. But you, you immediately go to your desk, you, you just start working, and then you have, a, you have a hard day, you come home, kids may, not, may or may not even be there, nowhere to be seen, you, you open the front door, and are you celebrated? People don't even know you're there, in most cases. And then they, they live, live their life, have that evening, and then they wake up in the morning, go back to their place of work, and it's deja vu all over again. And those are the two places where people should be most empowered and most celebrated. 
Because that's where they spend the most time, at work and at home. So if you are not empowered, if you are not celebrated, people are just starving for this. Men, women, boys, and girls, they are starving for empowerment. The need has never been greater uh, to, to empower people. And it's not something that you can buy. It's not something you can schedule. And so how in the world do we get better at empowering other people? Three things. Write these down. Number one. You need to find the right people. And how, and how do you know who the right people are for you to empower? So you aren't meant to empower everyone. That's the first thing you need to recognize. They're, not everyone will accept your empowerment. Not everyone will listen to you. Not everyone will even engage in conversation or dialogue no matter how much they need it. But remember, you're not doing it because they need it. You're doing it because it's a relationship. There's almost a compelling, there's almost a magnetism that just draws that, that together. So number one, when you find who you can empower, you need to, there's a couple of subset questions you need to ask yourself. Who do you know that looks up to you right now? Who in your life looks up to you right now? Younger, they may be younger than you, they may be older than you, it doesn't matter. They may have more money than you. They may have less money than you. They may have more success, less success, more education, less education. It doesn't matter. Who do you know that looks up to you right now? They respect you. They value your friendship. They value your relationship. Who do you know like that? Okay. Number two. Start taking a more active interest in their life. Whoever it is, however you answer number one, maybe two or three people, those are the people that you can most effectively empower. And empowerment starts in your own backyard. So you start taking a more active interest in their life. Now, how do you do that? Uh, first of all, I mean, the way I would do it is I would ask them to coffee and uh, just to catch up. And let's spend some time. It's low key. It's 30 minutes to an hour, and I'm, and we're just saying hello. People do it all day, every day in coffee shops across America. You just catch up. And what you will find is that at the end, nine times out of ten, even if you haven't talked to these people in months, they usually say, "Hey, let's stay in touch." And it just sort of happens. You naturally stay connected better after this initial visit. You naturally will stay connected better. You'll stay connected better. You're on Facebook. You'll stay connected more. You'll text more. You will talk more in between visits. And then maybe after two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, depends on what the relationship is, you might uh, you might say, hey, let's let's uh, have a coffee again. Are you available tomorrow at you know seven o'clock? So that is the idea uh, of what the second step you should do is start taking a more active interest in their life. You're not telling them what to do. You're not you're not making a plan for them. You're not teaching them. You're not coaching them. You are listening, and you are just being there for them. You are a sounding board. And as you do that, and then you have these other uh, conversations, because if you if we meet for coffee and you tell me, yeah, I've got this big test on Thursday that I'm taking. I don't know how I'm going to do. Guess what I'm probably going to do Thursday evening? If, if I'm trying to empower you, I'm going to text you and say, how the tests go today? And you're going to be so thankful that I cared, and you'll respond however you think it went, and you'll say, hey, I don't really know. I, I mean, I, I feel pretty good about it, but I'm not really sure. There are a couple of things I didn't know how to answer. I won't find out till Monday. Okay, great. Well, then what I'm going to say is let me know when you find out. So guess what? They're going to, they'll end up reaching back out to me on Monday or Tuesday with what, they, what score they got. Now, what I find most fascinating about this is – the conversation moves from the coffee shop to other types of uh, forms of communication. But what will happen is after you follow up, they will naturally, it will start happening where out of the clear blue, they will say, hey, I need to ask you something. And it's something about life. It it's something random. It's something that you would have never asked or known to ask or thought to ask. Now you're starting to really make a difference in someone's life and empower them in a meaningful level. Number three, consistency. Consistently get with them. 
consistently meet with them. Uh, you will find that you'll start having more communication with a text or email call. You still will want to, in your mind, make sure that you reach out and ask them. Don't schedule uh, at, It's not like in sales where it's book a meeting from a meeting and all these kind of things. And so when we're at the coffee shop, okay, when are we going to meet here next? That is not, remember, empowerment is not scheduled. Mom and dad didn't say, okay, that was great shooting basketball. I love spending quality time with you. Tomorrow at 2.30 to 3 o'clock, we will spend quality time again and empower you uh, and teach you and educate you and inform you into, uh, into uh, the best civil uh, person you can be for the community. You know, that's not what happens. So you don't schedule it from that time. You will kind of intuitively know, hey, it's been a few weeks. Let's get together. That is how you truly empower people. And, and please, for the sake of clarity in the marketplace, clean up the conversation. If you're mentoring some, or, or you're having a coaching call with somebody for an hour, you're not mentoring them. To some degree, you may be, uh, you're, but it's not empowerment. What I just gave you is empowerment. Anything else, you are mudding the waters. In fact, it is, it is all for marketing's sake, it's trying to make a buck, anything but this. And the reason why they want to use that word is that this is free. You can't charge for this. So there are ways, things that we can charge for that are very, uh, very beneficial, without a doubt. But I want you to understand what real empowerment is. I can have all kinds of motivational sayings and quotes and, and gadgets and widgets all around my office that inspire me, that in the moment they help me uh, get on a different track, they help shift where I'm at mentally, they help change in the way I think or keep me focused on the way I should think, and especially with affirmations, being able to control your mind and your thoughts, without a doubt, very helpful, very beneficial. Those are not empowerment. Okay, It's recognizing what truly empowerment is and how to get better at it. And what my vision is, is for a group of people in every city, town, state uh, in America, and, and really the world, who have a small group of people in their network, in their circle of influence, that they truly inspire and empower in a meaningful way. There are three ways I can help you in your 90-day race. Number one is you can uh, have a coaching call with me, and that's a visual coaching call. We get on a Google Hangout or FaceTime or Skype just like this, and it's just you and me, and we go through whatever area it is that you're wanting to focus on. It may be fitness. It may be business. I do a lot of business coaching. Uh, it may be helping your company create the right system, product positioning, product marketing, whatever it is. You can do that by the hour. It's $195 cheaper than an attorney, and uh, what an incredible investment. It'll keep you busy for a month. Second way I can empower you is with the deluxe package, and that is where you get my 150-page program guide along with one video per week of your 12-day raise, a 12-week 12, 12 raise, uh, and then three uh, videos for the 90-day post-race that you will do. So you will get both of those, uh, the videos, uh, which are private exclusive videos to the program, and the 150-page program guide, uh, and you will get a coaching call, a one-hour coaching call with me as well. That's $9.95. Uh, and then the third is the all-in package, and this is if you cannot absolutely, if you have a monumental goal uh, that you are trying to achieve uh, in the 90-day race, it may be uh, a new product launch for your company, there may be millions of dollars on the line, you may be an athlete, you may be a celebrity, you may be an athlete, whatever the case is, uh, you know, where failure is not an option. I have the all-in package. It's where you and I do this as much as we need to. You call me, you text me, email, and uh, and I'm right there for you. I hold your hand personally every step of the way of a 90-day race. That's an incredible value at just under $10,000, and we finance that. That's $99.95. You do not want to miss next Friday's Google Hangout. I'm going to be sharing and talking about the future of the direct sales industry. You can put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. And I'm going to be talking next Friday about how uh, to innovate in the direct sales industry, but really what the future of the direct sales industry looks like. I'm Dr. Roland Roberts, and remember, success likes speed.